One area of geometry notes that I haven't really touched upon is the fact that you can use color data from images to manipulate geometry. So in this video, I will show how to make a setup that uses an image to instance things on a plane. The setup can essentially be split into four parts. First, we recursively subdivide the plane based on some value extracted from the image. Then we instance some objects on the resulting vertices and again use some value from the image to scale the objects. Then we will translate the objects on the z-axis to create some depth. And finally, we will make a material that uses the depth we created to create color variations on the objects. Sounds complicated? Well, don't worry, it's actually much easier than it sounds. So let's get into it. To start off, I will add a plane with an image texture. The easiest way to do this is to enable the add-on called images as planes in the preferences. This will give you the option to add an object with your selected image texture applied to it from the regular add menu. If you want to use the image that I'm using, there is a link to it in the description. If you use your own image, some settings in the node tree will probably be different from mine, so just keep that in mind. So before going into the jump node side of things, I want to demonstrate something in the shader that will make things easier to understand. In the material that was applied to the image plane, add a mapping node and a texture coordinate node. And use the object coordinate. As you can see, the image now moved to the upper right corner, with its lower left corner being located at the plane's origin. To fix this, we can use the mapping node to move it to the correct location, by setting the x and y location to 0.5. So what does this have to do with the geometry node setup? Well, when using textures in geometry nodes, we don't have access to the texture coordinate node, but we have to instead rely on the actual positions of the vertices of the mesh. So in order to position the image correctly on the plane in geometry nodes, we have to do some vector manipulations similar to this. So let's emulate it in geometry nodes. Add an image texture node, and select the image texture that you imported in the dropdown. Add a position node, one vector math node set to add, and one vector math node set to divide. Connect the position node to the top input of the add node. Connect the add node to the top input of the divide node. And finally, connect the divide node to the vector input of the image texture node. Now, the values that I will use here to position the image correctly is dependent on the size of the image in the scene, but the rule is basically this. In the add node, the x and y values should be half the width and height of the image, so 0.5 for x and 0.5 for y in my case. For the divide node, the values for x and y should just be the width and height of the image, so 1 for x and 1 for y in my case. For an image like this, however, with a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, the values would be these instead, since in the scene, the image plane is 1.78 meters by 1 meter. Next, let's start recursively subdividing the mesh based on the image. Add a subdivide mesh node, and set the level to 5. This is essentially the base resolution of our mesh, and higher subdivision levels means higher resolution. While working with the setup, I will keep the level at 5, and increase it to 6 for the final render. Add a separate geometry node set to face, a subdivide mesh node with a level of 1, a join geometry node, and a compare node set to greater than. Connect the color of the image texture to the A input of the compare node. Then connect the result to the selection input of the separate geometry node. Connect both of the outputs of the separate geometry node to the join geometry node. Then add the subdivide mesh node over the inverted output. Now in wireframe mode, if I change the B value of the compare node, I can use it as a threshold for what parts of the mesh that should be subdivided based on the image. If you want to use a specific color as the compare value, you can add a separate color node and use either of the RGB channels. But for this example, 
I will just use the raw color data and a threshold value of 0.5. So now that we have one subdivision, let's add another by repeating the process with the subdivided part of the mesh. For this second level of subdivision, I will use a threshold value of 0.25. If you want more levels of subdivision, you can repeat this process any number of times, though it gets very computationally heavy very quickly, so be careful not to add too many. Alright, let's move on to instancing. For this part, you can use essentially any kind of mesh that you want, depending on what kind of look that you are going for. In my case, I will use letters and a specific font, since I like how it looks. If you want to use the same font, there is a link to a free download in the description. Add a string to curves node, a set position node, a vector node, a fill curve node, and an instance on points node. These are the settings that I will use for the string to curves node. And for the string value, I will use the alphabet and the numbers 0 to 9. To change the font, press this folder button here and browse to where your font is located and select it. Next, Connect the string to curves node to the set position node. Then connect the vector node to the position input. This resets the positions of the characters to the position 0, 0, 0, which they need to be at for the instancing to work properly. Connect the set position node to the fill curve node. And finally, connect that node to the instance input and enable pick instance so that the instance on points node only uses one letter per point. To get a more random distribution of letters, add a random value node set to integer, with a max value larger than the amount of letters in the string field, and connect it to the instance index. So now that we are instancing the letters, let's add some extra style to them by modifying the scale of the letters based on the image. To do this, add a map range node and connect it to the scale input. Connect the color of the image texture to the value input of the map range node. Here we can experiment with the from max to min and to max values to get different results. For my image, I will use these values. As a final touch, I will add some random offset to the letters on the z-axis. Add a translate instances node. a combined XYZ node, and a random value node. Set the max value of the random value node to 0.25. Then connect it to the C input of the combined XYZ node. And finally, connect that node to the translation input. If you want a larger distribution on the C axis, you can just adjust the max value of the random value node. Now, before going into the shader side of things, add a material in the materials tab. Then in the node tree, add a set material node and select your material in the dropdown. This is what the shader looks like, and it's pretty simple since it is using the actual positions of the letters to determine what color to use. We get the positions from the position output of the geometry node, and separate the C component of those positions. We then use a map range node to map the actual range of distribution along the z-axis, which in my case is 0 to 0 0.25, to a new range of 0 to 1. The reason for this is that the color ramp works in a range of 0 to 1, so by mapping the z-values to that range, the color ramp works as intended. Now with the color ramp, you can change and add any colors that you want and by changing the positions of the color stops, you can affect the color distribution and ratios. And if you don't want gradients between the colors, you can change the interpolation of the colors from linear to constant. So now to get a better look at what the final result would be, 
increase the first of the bad mesh node from 5 to 6. Now all you have to do is add a camera with high focal length and heavy depth of field, and you get yourself an intro for a true crime documentary or something. I hope you found this video helpful, and that you learned something new. See you next time.